When you hear the word Microsoft, chances are you instantly think of computers, Windows, or maybe even Bill Gates. The name has become so ingrained in the world of technology that it feels almost natural, as if it has always existed. But have you ever stopped to wonder where the name actually came from? Why Microsoft? What does it even mean? In this video, we'll explore the fascinating story behind one of the world's most iconic company names, how it was created, what it stood for at the time, and how it came to represent the entire personal computer revolution. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's rewind to the mid-1970s, a time when computers were not the sleek laptops or tablets we use today. Instead, they were large, expensive machines mostly found in universities or government labs. But something big was brewing. In 1975, two young friends from Seattle, Bill Gates and Paul Allen, saw the potential for something revolutionary, bringing computers to everyday people. Around this time, a small hobbyist computer called the Altair 8800 was released and it caught their attention. Gates and Allen realized that while the Altair was impressive, it needed software to become useful. So they decided to create a version of the basic programming language for it, which would allow users to write their own programs. And that's where the idea for a company began. Before there was Microsoft, there was simply a partnership between two passionate tech enthusiasts who wanted to make computer software accessible to a growing community of hobbyists. Bill Gates and Paul Allen were both programmers, and they understood that the true power of computers came from the software, the instructions that told the machine what to do. At that time, most people thought of computers purely as hardware, the physical machine itself. But Gates and Allen believed software would be the key to the future. When they decided to start a company dedicated to developing software for microcomputers, they needed a name that captured exactly what they were doing. The name Microsoft was actually coined by Paul Allen. It's a combination of two words, microcomputer and software. Back in the 1970s, the term microcomputer referred to what we now call personal computers. Small, relatively inexpensive machines compared to the massive mainframes used by corporations. Software, of course, referred to the programs that made those microcomputers useful. Put the two together and you get Microsoft, literally meaning software for microcomputers. It was simple, descriptive, and futuristic. In fact, in Paul Allen's own words, it just fit perfectly for what they were trying to build. Interestingly, when the name first appeared, it wasn't spelled the way we see it today. In the early days, it was written with a hyphen, Microsoft. The name made its first official appearance in a letter that Paul Allen wrote to Bill Gates in November 1975, referring to their partnership as Microsoft. Over time, as the company grew and became more formalized, they decided to drop the hyphen. By 1976, when they officially registered the company name, it became a single word, Microsoft. The change might seem small, but it reflected a bigger idea unity and simplicity. It wasn't just a descriptive label anymore, it was a brand. The name Microsoft quickly became synonymous with innovation in the emerging personal computer industry. At that time, Gates and Allen were working out of a small office in Albuquerque, New Mexico, a long way from the global empire Microsoft would one day become. But their vision was clear. They believed software would be the soul of computing, and their company's name boldly reflected that focus. Microsoft wasn't trying to sound mysterious or flashy. 
It was a straightforward, functional name that said exactly what they did. And that practicality, in a way, perfectly matched Bill Gates's personality. Analytical, logical, and efficient. As the company began to grow, Microsoft started producing software for different computer systems. But its big break came in the early 1980s when it partnered with IBM to create the operating system for the first IBM personal computer. That software, known as MS-DOS, became a massive success. And suddenly, Microsoft wasn't just another small tech company. It was a dominant force. The name Microsoft spread across the world as millions of people began using computers for the first time. Over the next few decades, the company's products, from Windows and Office to Internet Explorer and Xbox, turned Microsoft into one of the most powerful and recognizable brands in history. What's fascinating is that even though the company has evolved far beyond its original focus on microcomputer software, the name has never changed. Today, Microsoft makes everything from cloud computing systems to artificial intelligence, gaming consoles, and even hardware like the Surface laptops. Yet that old school name still carries all its original meaning. It reminds us of the company's roots, a time when personal computing was just beginning and when two young programmers believed that software could change the world. There's also something poetic about how literal the name is. In an era when tech companies often use abstract or symbolic names, like Apple, Google, or Amazon, Microsoft's name stands out for its straightforwardness. It tells you exactly what the company was built on. Software for microcomputers. It's a name that captured a moment in history, when computers were just starting to move from corporate labs into living rooms and classrooms. In a way, the name itself represents the birth of the modern tech industry. So why is it called Microsoft? Because in 1975, two visionaries wanted a name that clearly expressed their mission, to create software for the emerging world of microcomputers. That name not only captured what they were building, but also became a foundation for one of the most influential companies in history. It's a reminder that sometimes the simplest ideas, even a name made from two ordinary words, can end up defining an entire era of human innovation. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.